All right, now our deep dive this week is, um, I guess it's more <laughs> of a conversation mm. for us to have rather than a deep, deep dive. I think a lot of people, and like I'm a classic example, uh, did well last week, but I found myself with 14, maybe 15 after trades this week players. That's if everything goes to plan with Fafita, with Harry Grant, all these guys. You got how many after two trades? About 15. I'm pretty short. Yeah. Well, I, that's depending on what happens with Val. Actually, let's do a count. You got your Mal Meningas ready? So, Harry Grant, Sonny Luke, uh, Jack DeBellin, Tohu Harris, Fafita, Horsburgh, Hosking, Nico Hines, Joey Manu. Then I've got Billy Smith, Kiraz, Buller, and at the moment I've traded it. I, I was fucking around with it this morning, so I've got Sivitalik I traded in at the moment. So how many is that? 13. 13. Oh, sorry. I, I know, then I've got one more spot that I will trade in, so I'm going to have 14 at the moment. Those, they all back up. But I'll tell you the way that I'm looking at it, and I know this is easy to say this week, and you might disagree, which I'm interested to hear your take on it anyway. I think with this round 14, if you did well last week, to me that probably means you're well set up for round 16 as well. And probably round 19. I've got a heap of Parramatta boys who aren't playing this week. I think I'm looking at this period as a six-week gap instead of a one-week gap. Definitely, yeah. I think everyone is pretty well set up for round 16. Round 19 is probably the, the one that you say, yeah, if, if you had that shot this week, then round 19 you're probably looking all right. Still a long way away, though, but... Well, the, the reality of it is the three teams that have a bye this weekend mm. are three of the eight teams that are playing in round 16. Parramatta, Knights, and Manly. Yeah. So if, if there's mm. those players you don't have, and there's there's certain guys from those teams that I will 100% sell before the next period, like your Phoenix Crosslands, these sort of guys. But I, I just think that, yes, your round 14, I might give a little this week, but I think I will gain a lot on the other weeks, and it's not weeks that I want to be flushing trades. All right, so I've got some good numbers for you from uh, Mr. Adam Darusi. One of the greats. One of the greats. So he's Did got, they consider playing him in the back row instead of Dad Knockenmore? He could be in. He could be in, right? Yeah. He'd kill it on the edge. Yeah. He'd be sharp. What position do you reckon Darusi was? I reckon he's a hooker. I was going to say a hooker as well. He looks like a hooker. Yeah. Of the Sunday afternoon variety. He'd have some cheek as well. Well, fucking well and truly. So... His data, two teams in the top 100, including the team coming second, have only 13 players this week. So that's obviously before trades. So even if they boosted, they're going to be short this week. Yep. That's pre-restings. That's pre-restings, and this would probably include Valence to Day owners and anyone else who's benched or whatever. So... <sighs> What else has he got? So, on average, the top 100 teams have 16.4 players available. The top 10,000 teams is 16.6 players available. So, with two trades, I'm, I think I'm 17. I'm 17, but it's a strong 17. So, like I'm, that's good. I don't have any duds in there, which is handy. But, so with two trades, that would put them to 19 or 17, 18 and a half. But then there's restings, there's if you own Valence to Fade off the bench, any other players like that. In other words, even with one or two restings, there's going to be a lot of teams short this week. 100%. That full article will be on scpublic.com.au within about an hour. To be honest with you, if I go into this week, if I go into this week with 14 <coughs> and Nathan Cleary is rested, I'm mm. okay. If he's not, then I'm very, very worried. Oh, I knew it was, I knew it was going to be brutal, but that's... That's something. Yeah, it's rough. And that's where I sort of sit there and go, okay, do I maybe need to go a little pod captain this week and try and make up for you it? you got two I've, boosts left, yeah? i got one boost left, but I don't want to use one this week. Uh, I want to save it. Because the other thing that I need to keep in mind is <clears> that, yes, I'm going to do well, I think, in round 16 and 19 because I've got these Parramatta boys already there, plus whoever I can add that I think will be a keeper mm. towards the back end. But Parramatta don't play in the last week, so I've got to find a way to get rid of all these Parramatta boys before then too. So I'm not going to waste a boost this week. I'm going to I'm going to cop a little bit of an L this week, and then come into the last what is it ten weeks of the season or whatever with my twenty trades and one boost. Gee, it's an intriguing week. So intriguing, yeah. And I I, I don't think the damage will be as bad as what some are expecting. Personally, yeah. There will be opportunity for big rises. Yep. For sides that do have a, a quality seventeen, 
But in terms of being short, there'll be a lot of, like, people aren't going to back up from origin. Let's put it that way. There'll be concussions. There'll be injuries. There'll be blokes who just need a rest. So teams are going to be short, and you won't be in the line, but big opportunities for green. Yeah. I, I just look at it and go, I had a good round 13. I know I'm going to have a good round 16 and round 19 mm. if I have to wear a bang average round 14, I'm yeah. sort of happy to do that. And it's the classic we speak about often, Guru, of you don't tear your side apart for one round. Yeah. Especially when everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. So I think I'll be... And you know what? I, you know, on last weekend I sat there really happy with my score, seeing all the big scores on social mm. media. And obviously you never see the, 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 the low scores anywhere. Yeah. That'll be me next week. I'll just keep the head yeah. down, be quiet, <laughs> and we'll be back up for the weeks yeah, after yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, but it's an interesting <laughs> one. I just think it is worth noting with these teams that have the buy that they are going to be super relevant over the next few weeks, in particular your Parramatta. Um, and then your, your Knights and Manly do play in round 16. So, you know, f- for me with um, Kalen Ponga, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm actually thinking I might hold him for round 16 now. Yeah, I'd be holding Ponga if I owned. If Queensland win tonight, which they won't, um, I'll be definitely holding Ponga, I think. The result is going to make a lot of super coach decisions. Yes, 100% it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's if they lose, I think Ponga plays game two. I think it's as simple as that. There's a really good chance. Ponga plays around the game too. Yeah, if they yeah. lose. Yeah. So could potentially play regardless. Yeah. But uh yeah, I, I will just say that um one team that I think is really worth keeping an eye on over the next few weeks is the Sharkies, as we said before. But I fuck, I love that. Round round sixteen they play the doggies, round nineteen they play the Tigers. Mm. That'll be a that'll probably be a Tiger side with, without Appy as well. <sighs> I know they've got the buy in round 17, but I, I, like, I don't think you're going to stack your team with fucking eight Sharkies. You're only going to have two, mm. three if you've got Nath, uh, three if you've got um, Nico. So there's a couple of backs. I'm also, I know he's expensive, but Britton Nicara has really caught my attention. Yeah. He's one I'm seriously considering. Yeah, really keen on. I think I'm going to probably wait until round 16 for the majority of my Sharks. I might go early on, say, one of them. Regarding that round 17... I think because we were so focused on the first buy and we invest in particularly Parramatta players, but yeah. Parramatta players, Manly players, Newcastle players, round 17, the three teams on the buy, the Bulldogs, the Sharks, the Tigers, who all play round 16 and 19, they all came off the buy in round 13. So I, I'd be surprised if people really owned many of those guys already. So we're not going to be stat flushed with them. Our numbers for 16 will be all right. So I don't, Envision round seventeen being as anywhere near as tricky as what this week is going to be. I yeah, I think round seventeen will be a walk in the park. Um, I don't know if Buller will still be in my team by then. Realistically, I think he'll be out of most teams by then. Surely, he could easily. It'll all be performance based. Yeah, he, he could easily be a, a round sixteen chop. Yeah, I, so, I so think he plays he round be. sixteen and then you flip him there. Yeah, if he's killing it, you can hold round nineteen, but. Two gun fullback slots. I can see myself holding till 16 and see it. Yeah. It is just worth noting, obviously, in round 17 with Bulldogs on the bye, you will be without Franklin Pello. <laughs> <laughs> so plan accordingly to me. It's so, so good. In a week where I was like, oh, I need every one of my players' name, like this being yesterday afternoon, team this Tuesday, I'm like, except Franklin Pelle because we're all most just going to get a free VC loophole crack. I'm like, if I end up with, like, say, 18 players, I'm like, I don't want to drop a gun starting 17 player to get Franklin seven. So when he wasn't <laughs> named, I'm like, okay. I, I'd prefer potentially playing short than having him screw a potential free VC loophole. So back that. Any more chat on this round, mate? Oh, uh, good, mate. Or, okay. <clears throat> now, stats deep dive this week. We normally take a couple of players and go through their numbers and whatnot. We thought we'd do something a little bit different today. And uh, when we talk state of origin, there's only one year I ever want to talk about. 2005. You want to take oh. us away? <laughs> yeah. Arguably the greatest origin form. Pff, arguably. Yeah, the, if you're the, arguing yeah. against it, you're an idiot. Don't have to speak to me. Yeah. Your name is probably Matthew Johns. Yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> the greatest origin performance of all time, state of origin, game two, 2005, New South Blues, Andrew Johns, the eighth. So I... A few years ago, I launched SC Playbook the year that uh, about a month before COVID hit and the NRL stopped for the first time since World War II. Brilliant timing. I thought, geez, f- for someone dedicated to super coach content, this is a real spanner in the works. What sort of content can I put together in the meantime? So I, I whipped together some 
historic games, classic games, and obviously individual performances and how they would have gone super coach wise. So Joey Johns was one of the ones that I went back and put an article together for. His stats for that game, three goals, nine runs, two line breaks, a line break assist, two try assists, three tackle breaks, 11 tackles, force dropout, a 40-20, Three missed tackles and error, so an incredibly well-rounded performance. I'll be honest, not as many as I was anticipating. Can I have a guess? You can. I want to say around the 121 mark. 107. 107. Yeah. So unbelievable performance. I was hoping for a little bit higher, but 107 points. Uh, who do you reckon would have been the second highest scorer in that game? Uh, I would say... I want to say Minicello. Anthony Minicello, two tries, 19 runs, a line break, 11 tackle breaks, a couple of offloads, 104 points. Yeah, right. I don't reckon Danny Badiris would have been too far behind them either. I don't have Danny, quiet, but though. yes, uh, Danny would have been right because he would have had a, a try assist or two as well in there probably. He had a try too, that ball that Joey The threw. try, yeah, oh, that's it. That is one of my favourite passes yeah. of all time. That one. And that ball that Cooper Cronk threw Slater in the 12 grand final. Uh, those two are my two of my favourite passes of all time. Yeah, the way cool. that Joey came off his right and threw it back between the fucking ruck. Yeah. That was incredible. That's freakish. It's oh. it's wild. Uh, yeah, to do that in the Origin Arena. And we all know the story about Joey that year, where he came from. And, you know, he played hard than any games of football. It's worth noting also, we spoke about it on the live stream the other day. 05, Joey, his team came last. He played 16 games. He polled 31 daily end points. Yeah. Fucking unbelievable. Thurston got 32. His team went to the grand final. Yeah, that's so absurd. It's it's crazy. Like, it's it, it, it defies belief yeah. completely. It's wild to think if Joey would have played one more game of football, he would have won the Dally M that year. And then, we, like, we, oh. imagine if he had a Dally M medal with a wooden spoon in the same year. It's only been done once before, Terry Lamb in the 80s when he was playing for Matt Magpies, I think it was. Mm. But to come last in the modern era and do that. Wow. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I don't think it'll ever go close to that. No, one, no one in that many games, yeah. too. Unheard yeah. of. Oh. I've got, uh, I did a stack of those and a lot of them around NRL games and like, you know, Joey Johns against the Raiders in Canberra went ham one day, Terry Campese against the Panthers I believe it was one day and some big, big scores in excess of 200 plus. So yeah. we might touch on them a few times about the year. There's one uh, Mal Meninga had against the Chooks mm. one day. Where I think he scored five, he kicked eight. Just chipping over the top, he was just taking the piss. Ooh, might have to crunch the numbers for that one. Yeah, very, very, very yeah. entertaining one. I, I, I think it's up on YouTube if you want to go and have yeah. a look at it. Uh, but yeah, geez, going back through history and looking at super coach schools for some of those games so would cool. have been unbelievable. Yeah, I've got about seven or eight. There's a Brett Kamali masterclass in there as well. Insane, <laughs> far out. Geez, I, 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 I know Joey was the star of the show that night, but fuck, Minnie had a game. He's enormous. So that his, I think it was his second Origin Series, the 05. I think he debuted 04, 03. Freak Anthony Minicello. Um, isn't it funny? Like, you look, you had, you had Joey as the best player in the world at that point. Injuries completely fucked him before that, but mm. after that. And Anthony Minicello, that was the, like, he, he won the Golden Boot that year. Then the injuries hit again. It's, it's two oh. guys that if they would have played their entire career, like, Joey's already considered the best ever. Yeah. But Mini, where he could have got to. Yeah. Like he like wouldn't have had those injuries. I don't know when Slater becomes the Australian fullback. He had back issues like his entire career, Mini. Hey? Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, it was from 05 onwards. Of 05, 05 yeah. onwards, he won the Golden Boot, then it just went back. Back went. And it just all went to shit. It was insane. I enjoyed that so much more than what I thought I would. All right. <laughs> um, sit face. Sit face. And nice. Origin kicks off in 20 minutes. <laughs>